Hi, I'm uh, Henry. I'll be playing um, the part of Oldster. Hi, I'm Ed. I'll be playing Youth. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I will be playing Novice in part one of the play. Hi, I'm Lucy, and I'll be playing the part of Novice in part two of the play. Hi, I'm Georgina, and I'm going to be playing the role of Cheerful. Hi, my name is Joey, and I'll be playing the role of Avian. Hi, I'm Sophia, and I'll be playing the part of Corpse. I'm Daisy, and I'll be playing the part of Mentor. I hate theatre. Never been attracted. It's a bunch of crap. Bullshit. You see it, what good is it? What is it? Entertainment. Full grown adults mucking around, bearing the bare butts, laughing at something. He he ha ha. What smart person is gonna act like that? It's all fake. Stupid, goofing off. Look at those foreheads. Those huge arms and legs. You could plough a field with those. Put somebody like that on a tractor, he'll plough a good 10 hectares for you in one day. Maybe more. And these women, you should have babies. Make borscht. The state will support you. That's being useful. But what good comes of some painted up guy wiggling his ass on, on a stage? They're all vermin. What more can I say? Vermin. Scum of the earth. Traitors. They feed her out of my hand and bite the hand that feeds them. I fed them all with my left tit and they. Traitors. That's why there's no theatres in villages. Villagers won't put up with that crap. Peasants. They're, they're of the earth. They're pure. You can't fool them. Villagers don't have any picture galleries either because look how pretty it is outside the window you don't need pictures for that anyway how can you call those things pictures a kid could do that Chagall schmagall 30 million dollars 40 give him 100 a kid could still do it we had apple trees out our window then a meadow where the caucus horses grazed Oh, there's a noble animal. I don't know why, but I've been attracted to horses my whole life. They're quiet and they obey. They work until they drop, never ask for anything. Yeah, mares can be a bit feisty, but you just give her a little crack on the head and she'll calm right down. Then put blinders on her and you can fire all water. She's loyal, like a country should be. Workhorses, loyal, she'll eat from your hand, won't even lift an eye. Sometimes I even have dreams. Horses could make a good country. We'd find common ground. A few all, a few wax. She'd work for me and love me. You can change everything, literally everything. You just need to want it and you can change everything for the better. That's my motto and my message. Let's say it's my epistle. Zing, zing, zing. My message to the universe. I love sending messages to the universe because the universe answers and it's so cool. Lena, Lena, are you searching for cheerful positivity? Well, here you are, Lena. Here's all the positivity you could want. I'm from Grodno. Grodno is like the west of Belarus. It's kind of like Belarusian Europe. There were Poles there before the war. Our city used to be really pretty, but pretty old. Everything was Soviet and falling down. Now even Poles come and are knocked out by our city. We wanted to do it and we did. Or take manicures, for instance. I used to do pearl. I shied away from the bright colors and then I just went ahead and did it white, red, white. It's a really pretty combination, white, red, white. Very fashionable. 
that's our national flag. It was my wedding manicure, by the way. <laughs> you thought it was mine. No, I'm still freelancing. I'm accepting offers. I'm casting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was my sister's wedding, Maria. It's okay for her. She's already 21. A very formidable lady. I'm so happy for her. Universe. Universe, you answered. You love us. It was planned for August the 9th, a Sunday, just a super day. Her guy is really cool. He's from the Ukraine. Super tall, an athlete, runs every day. And he's good looking, of course. Natch, <laughs> I was kind of jealous. <laughs> Ukrainians are so hot. Lvov is like my hometown. I love everything about it. The java and the chocolate. I feel completely at home going to a super trendy cafe in town. It's like the whole world was only like Lvov. For the wedding, I asked to be let off as an observer in the ninth voting precinct. I asked another girl to replace me. They didn't let us inside anyway, because of the coronavirus, they said. No observers allowed. Anybody else, sure, but not observers. So we just looked in from the outside. True, they taped paper on the window. It was really funny because all the windows are normal. So we just saw the ones with the voting commissions. They're the only ones taped up. It's really stupid. So we just counted the voters, how many went in, and if they had white bracelets, because that was the sign of change. So far, nothing adds up. We saw 30 people go in, but they say there were 126. I mean, that's just stupid, a mistake. How can you fake things like that? Bachter wins it. Bachter is champion. All the cities know it. Every house, all the hooligan fanatics will put Fear in you. What are you grinning at, sucker? Want a kick in the ass? Oops, my bad. I overdid that. The game was over. Well played all around. A real bonus for all the good black shirts. See this nose? Busted twice. I I and this scar here. That's from a dynamo crowd whacking me with a flagpole. 13 stitches. Blood was everywhere. You should have seen us drink with them after. Bros, you guys are hardcore. I love you all. You gotta respect your opponent. You wanna fight? Fight. But fight fair. Don't hit kids and leave girls alone. Don't gang up two on three on one. Don't call the cops. And the main thing, if you take one in the chops, don't be a bitch about it later. Beyond that, hit them as hard as you want. Not like the moustache guy. I got no problems with someone showing off he's strong, but Fight fair, asshole. Your fat face is always smeared all over the TV screen. And you're always making all your flunkies sing praises in your ear. Let someone else have a chance. Then toss all the votes on the table. Here, all you, all you freaks and Freemasons, count how many voted for me. Count them and shut up. I answer for every vote, but no. This rat comes slinking at you under the table stabs you in the back, anybody who is against him, anyone who raises his head, they will get prison terms. Everybody laughs. In 26 years, it's like no one single, not one single honest person ever opposed him. Nothing but thugs, thieves and criminals. I'm fucking sick of him. Fucking sick, I tell you. 26 years. That's how long I've been alive to the day. I've loved soccer my whole life. Just as long as I absolutely hated that bastard. I used to binge play Counter-Strike. Well, maybe not binge. I wasn't supposed to play for long. I'd hide my laptop under my blanket and play. Later I stopped doing that. The Counter-Strike, I mean. Later I got hooked on Dota. And Dad made them take my laptop away. Shit. The last fucking dictator in Europe. All the kids play it. It's no big deal. But that's how he is. You want to be like them? Like these guys? What's got in your head? Fuck, Dad. But everyone else can play. Then he starts on that same old tune. Young people were the real thing back in the old days. The Young Communist League. The Student Construction Brigades. 
how they just loved marching lockstep, how they defended villages in Afghanistan, how he milked cows and drank steaming hot fresh milk. I can't stand that milk. It smells like a wet dog and I get instant diarrhea. Stories of his. I can't stand them anymore about the Soviet Union. <laughs> I've never lived a day there. I'm only 16. There was nothing interesting about it. There wasn't any internet, no smartphones, no tablets. There weren't even any decent movies. They did nothing but milk cows and binge drink vodka. I mean, I still play on a computer, though. I got a laptop from Vasya that I play oh, on the sly <laughs> to spite him. Vasya's my only friend. He'll be 32 soon. He can put out a rabbit's eye with a knife at a distance of 10 yards. He's badass. My bodyguard. <laughs> Not even Sleepy knows about that. Sleepy is Larissa Nikolavia. She makes sure I don't quit my schoolwork. She takes me to school and picks me up. She's mean and she's an informer. Sticks her, her nose in everywhere. I know she, she checks my phone and tells dad everything. I have to show her my homework before I take her to school. She's the, only, she's the one who tells teachers what grades I get. A fine teacher. Sleepy Larissa. I heard them talking once. Dad says he needs a woman around all the time. Like, I miss my mother. You need to be his mother in some things, Larissa. How can someone else be my mother? So sometimes I wonder, do I love him? I mean, I'm his son. It's my duty to love him, but my duty. Everyone is bound in duty to him. She's not a great lady. I mean, she tries. She squeals and thrusts, but it's not much. Now, the broads we had in Lugansk, oh, they'd suck you dry. Oh, you'd come out soaking wet, like out of a bathhouse. Mm. I'd have to cool it off with ice. They had hips like bicycle tires, lips like bicycle tires, in fact, Whew, like this. Ah. Whew. There was this Masha from Belarus. Ah, yes, a little more reserved, like you're a little beholden to them. But she was pretty, white teeth, kept herself neat. You can count on me. Everything's in working order now. There was a time when things were dicey. I'd get it up, then I couldn't. In training, we had this doctor. He was uh, here already. He said it was nerves, but that was pretty obvious. 2014 was, was a nervy year. Whole mix of things. I, uh, I thought I was, I was done for. Ten years or more eating sloth out of an aluminum bowl. For what? For defending the foundations of the state. For anti-fascist activity. Thank God. In little groups slipping through their fingers, the whole crew, to put it elegantly, got the fuck out of there. We had one hot platoon. Beasts. Lyoka, mushroom, greeny, uh, pepper, nitsko. Some of them ended up uh, in, in, in Kemerev, Kemerovo, uh, some in Vladivikaz. A couple officers even made it to Moscow. And some of us ended up here. <laughs> Soviet Belarusia. Europe. They have casinos here. It's, it's clean. It pays good. The girls, the place has an ideology. You know, just what's good and, and what's bad. It's black and white, as it should be. It's got its drawbacks, I already said about the girls. That was no time to schedule a wedding. August 9th, I took leave, but my heart felt it. There, were, there would be hell to pay. My guts were churning, then fuck it all, I lost my heart on. The only other time that happened was in 2004, in Kiev. Everybody then was strutting around, talking tough. They were on their way out now. The banderites were done for, washed up. We'll pick them off one by one. Backup was already flying in from Moscow. 
10 platoons. All Putin was going to abandon his old friend Yanukovych. But I had a feeling that the hammer was coming down. A different hell to pay. And now here, again, not good. And I still have that fucking wedding night ahead of me. You need lots of fat for good, tasty meat patties. Because if you just use red meat, they'll be dry. Here's what I do. I take ground beef and ground pork. And I always add a chunk of pork fat. Let's say half a pound or so. Or it can be lard. You put all that through the meat grinder. Add onion, garlic and spices. Or you can use onion powder. I haven't done it in a long time. Sir Yoza always loved my meat patties. He could eat ten. That's right, ten at once. The kids could too. Sergei, sometimes he comes home from business trips really angry. He films everything he sees. All the dirt, the confusion, the pain of being with people. As a blogger, people always tell him the straight truth, as it is. And he says to me, how is this possible? This country is filled with lies. Everybody lies and lies and lies. The TV says one thing, but life is completely different. Then I serve him a plate of meat patties to get his mind off of things. I often ask myself these days, I'll sit in front of the mirror and turn off my phone so people don't bug me. Otherwise, BBC, CNN, ours and other channels all harass me all the time. I comb my hair, seems like forever. And I have just one question in my head. What will people do for love? In the past, I would have said anything. Now I don't think so. Not just anything. Die? Sometimes that might be the easiest thing to do. You die and you're gone. No more choices. The sacrifice is made. You gave your life. Fulfilled your mission. But what if you want to live? But live for whom? For him? For yourself? Your country? The kids often ask when dad will get out. Mom, you're president now. Why don't you let him out? What am I supposed to answer? I'm president and I have nothing. I'm in control of nothing, myself included. I have 37 years of service behind me. 37 years. I have five certified awards from the Department of Education with gold seals, signed by four different ministers. One even sent my nomination for Teacher of the Year to the President. But something got hung up. It's all right, I don't lose faith because I know the President is thinking about us, always. The President remembers all of us. The teachers, the milkmaids, the pensioners, everybody. Can you imagine the head he must have to remember everyone like that? What a head! Whenever I think about his head, I grab my own head in my hand. Now the students, why do you all hang out in these gadgets and Minecrafts of yours? That man is always thinking. He's always solving some problem. Nothing gets past him. So all you ingrates can live a better life. So there's stability. He gave you textbooks. He pays our salaries, gives us work. Look at the building he built, the flowers he planted. He put a Sputnik into space. Everything. So you could study. And you? You have no conscience. But then he went and scheduled elections this summer. Why did he do that? It's vacation time. Everybody's at the dacha. Tomatoes, watermelons, the dacha. And the whole weight of it was on us teachers. I don't support that. It would have been better to cancel them altogether. What a pain these elections are. Look who they bring us. Trump, Poroshenko, Yeltsin, they're all savages. Even without them, you know what the people want. The people always want one thing. Stability. And what is stability? The boss, that's who. 26 years, that says it all. Every one of them, stable. May it stay that way. I have four more years till, till my pension starts. Our high school is a showcase among schools. The president's son even went here. Only I worry about the young teachers. It's in their heads. They fall for all that Western propaganda. 
how do we count the votes? I always tell them, whatever the country needs, that is what you do. Smarty pants. There are smarter ones above you. You want a job? Work. Go ahead and do your job as a teacher. But elections, though, that's our duty to stability. You'll save the government and they'll give you bonuses. God willing, I was in charge of five elections at our school. I did everything that needed doing, precisely as the results were planned. And everybody got their bonus. I don't like these observers, though. What are you trying to observe, huh? I have all the numbers up here in my head. You just jangle my nerves. Where do I talk? The camera? Okay. Oof. Wait. Hello. I am Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, candidate for president. I am 37 years old. I was born in Polseye. I graduated from the philology department of Moser Pedagogical University. I am fluent in Belarusian, Russian and English. I was never attracted to the idea of making a career. I always saw myself primarily as a wife and mother, a homemaker. That's what I do best. I was never interested in politics. I was perfectly happy with that. A year ago, my husband, Sergei Tikhanovsky, created a project he called A Country for Life, in conjunction with which he met all kinds of people of all professions. They would tell him what worried them, what they were feeling, what they thought about Belarus. People talked about their difficult lives and shared dreams about life in a free, prosperous country. What amazed me most of all was that people who appeared on our blog channel were being thrown into prison. What is all that about? Can we possibly make peace with such injustice? That is why, when my husband Sergei was not permitted to participate in the election, I chose to replace him and march all the way to victory. Did I stumble? No. I can't believe I'm saying this. All the way to victory for myself, my husband, for all of us, our children. As a wife and mother, I understand it's one and for all and all for one in the family circle. I want it to be like that in our country too. They say a woman can't be president. That's not true. Nobody can stop a woman who is defending her family, just as no one can stop a nation that demands justice. Wouldn't you know it, goddammit? Fucking bastards. I'm on duty the 9th, the 10th and the 11th. All leaves cancelled, all vacations, the whole nine yards. I tell my commander I'm getting married. We've been planning it for, for two months, he says. Are you an idiot? I, I don't give a shit if you die. That's no excuse not to report to duty. Again, are you an idiot? He looks me right in the eye. Are you an idiot? I'm no idiot. I called Masha right away. The wedding's fucked, Masha, I say. Judy calls. Judy comes first, Masha. I called on the phone on, on purpose so I wouldn't have to listen to her scream and yell at me to my face. About her relatives coming in from Lida, about the restaurant, her mother uh, already paid for. Uh, about are you a man or not? You promised. Fuck me. Uh, if she doesn't understand the word duty to your country, then what can I say? I serve Belarus. I serve Lukashenko. He's my commander in chief. In other words, whatever he says, we do. Our deputy political officer is an excellent guy. His every word burns. Bullseye. Death to the enemy. Poles, Ukrainians and Lithuanians are our enemies. The Russians aren't enemies, but they want to snap us up, which means they're enemies too. But first, but enemies, that, that kind of stuff, thing happens. At first, with the Russians alongside us, we'll bury our primary enemies, those Western pricks, Yankees and maiden maniacs. Oh, we'll take care of the Ruskies afterwards. The boss won't let them get away with anything, even if he becomes a Russian governor. Shit, Mash is calling again. Hey, oh, now, now, quit crying. I know you're pregnant, so what? We just put it off a little. We'll push these guys back, make minced meat of them. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care. I'll take care. You should see our outfits. Yeah, seven shipments from Moscow. Cherry stuff. Impressive. If it wasn't for the damned heat, you're in body armor. A helmet, a face, mask, shin guards too. How about that? Ooh, a day or two of that and, and we'll clean out the country. 
Impressive. Dad! Daddy! What happened to the internet? I'm doing an interview, Collier. Dima Gordon is here from Ukraine. Pay no attention, Dimitri. You asked about my father. Yes. I think I saw my father once when he came home to us. I remember he came home. I remember vaguely. It's the only thing my memory preserves. He was a very, very tall man. Well over six and a half feet. The police put me on notice when I was in elementary school. We had this gang of school kids who used to turn over benches. But you don't care about that. If you don't turn on the internet, I'm not going to be president after you. Jokester. Still a kid. What do you expect? He's the leader of the opposition in my house. I'll tell you something strange, Dima. Believe me, as an experienced president, you don't become a president. You're born a president. Damn! Why did I have that manicure, the hairdo and the hot wax? Why did I buy that dress? 367 rubles. That's two month through stipends. The wedding is off. Roma has to work. Turns out Roma worked for the riot police. Although he's Ukrainian, I thought he was just a policeman somewhere, you know, a street cop or a traffic cop, but he's some riot trooper. <laughs> so what though? They'll get married in the new Belarus. That's even better. Look at all the people out there in line in their white bracelets. Universe, we are the majority. Our commission is tried and true. There's me and two vice principals, Kristalina Sergeyeva and Lydia Mikhailova, the administrator, Igor Nikolaev, and teachers from the lower classes. Okay, everyone, listen here. I'm giving instructions. Get this right. Here are the numbers to memorize. This is how the count will go. You take a ballot and show it to the person on your right. Lydia is on my right. I show it to her and put it in her pile. I know my pile must have 206 ballots. So I built it up to 206. Now, Kristalina is supposed to have 1,361, which will be President Lukashenko's pile. Memorize the numbers for each candidate and put that precise number in your pile. Everything left over is declared boiled and not defective. And that's that. Yes, Casataneva. Who cares where the numbers come from? The higher ups already did the counts. Your 30 something brains can't make things add up. Okay, here's what we memorize Tikhonovskaya, 206. Don't write it down, just memorize it. 206. President Alexandra Lukashenko, 1361. Dmitriev, 52. Kanapatskaya, God, I hate her face. 73. Chirachin, 39. Against all, 100. See how nice and even? 100 against everyone. You got that? Let me repeat it for the especially gifted among us. I saw this in a film about zombies. These zombies took over the world, like here in Belarus. You, you take a magazine, as fat as you can get, and you, you wrap it around your arm and tape it. Now you've got an arm shield. Go ahead, hit me with your truncheon. It, it, it's kind of awkward, but it's protection. He won't give up easy. He doesn't give a shit if he wins or loses elections. He won't give up power. He's got his, his teeth sunk in it. His teeth may be crumbling, but they're still hanging on. He's got nothing but power. His, his, his fingers are blue. His hands are shaking, but they hang on. He said he'd die before letting go. Then turn power over to his son. Screw that shit. I don't know. I, should I take a billy club or not? They might see it on me. 
anyway, this this revolution is supposed to be peaceful. People walking around with, with flashlights and flowers. They go around hugging the bastards, singing songs. These girls are crazy. These guys have truncheons, grenades, combat weapons, blood in their eyes. They're defending their Führer. They don't give a rat's ass about your flowers. All these guys from our hood are coming out today. All the fanatics, they're all on our side. We're going to defend our votes. Bachter is champion. All the cities know it. Every house, all us who hooligan fanatics will put fear in you. All's good now. They sent in good backups. Very polite. I asked one, what's your name? He says, Renner. Last name? No. He smiles. I left my last name at home, he says. So, where were you, Renat, when we were dodging the bullets of Banderite bandits during Maiden? He laughed. White teeth. Don't worry, bro, he says. Breathe easy. This city will be ours tonight. Masha, Masha, just don't worry. I have great news. She won. I counted the bracelets. One thousand four hundred and twelve beautiful, marvellous white bracelets. And we only have a few more than two thousand people in our precinct. Do you realise what that means? Masha, she won in a landslide. We will have a new Belarus and a woman president. I'm so excited. What idiot? posted a recording of our rehearsal on the internet. Look me in the eye. Svetlana, you? Katsurina, did you do it? Kasatonova? Kasatonova, you think this is a joke? These are state secrets. You were entrusted to look after the interests of the state. You were given that trust, trust. And you? Look what people are writing right there in YouTube. Judases will throw you in prison, falsifiers. For 20 years, I was never a falsifier. And now, all of a sudden, falsifier. You broke the law. I have four years left to my pension, and I am not a principal. And the president is right not to leave. You've got to hold your position to the end. You earned it with spilt blood. All these ballots, self-indulgence and nothing more. Okay, put the numbers I gave you in the protocol. Hang them on the door and let everyone else go hang themselves. Riot police will get you home. What a pain this internet is. Damn, we never have any problems at the residence here. Damn, Dad, why would you cut off the internet everywhere? All the games I play are online. Dota's frozen. Tanks is frozen. Dad says it's his enemies doing it. That Merkel's hackers are knocking us offline. Then I hear my brother give the command to knock out Talega with the Chinese jammers. 100% down. I mean, the, the Telegram app. My brother's like my father's right-hand man. Dad gave him the Security Council. He doesn't trust anybody else. And he can't stand his servants. He says they're stupid and they screw everything up. But they're loyal. You've got to keep on top of things. If you quit making things hard for them, that they'll get comfy and they'll eat you alive. What's my brother to serve me when I'm president? Like a, a grand vizier. I say, Dad, let's do it in order. First you, then Vitcher, then me. For some reason he got really angry. So Yosa, do you hear me? Through the wall, my voice. Can you hear me? Sayosa? Sake, do you hear me, my love? We won, Sayosa, we won. I want this stopped. And I'm asking you to spare no one. I want order in the country by morning. Wait, yes, I have completely different numbers. None of this adds up. How can that be? We are fucked. I'm not going out there. I won't go out there. Look at that mob. They'll tear us apart. Banderites. 
what idiot put that video on the internet? Whoever posted that can go out there yourself. I'm not going. Take this woman home, Renat. She's already shit herself from fear. She paints up the elections and cries she's splashed with paint. Stuff happens. Now she's afraid of the voters. Shame. Shame. Shame on you. How could you write something like that when we all counted them? You, you all saw it. It's a lie. A grenade explodes. Act two. Thank you, residents of Minsk, for tolerating me for a quarter century. A man who came to you from the provinces. Thank you, Vladimir Putin, for your victory congratulations. After all, our homeland is one and the same, from Brest to Vladivostok. Throw Lukashenko in a prison van. Throw Lukashenko in a prison van. Go, go, go away. I'll answer that. Put away your telephone. I'm not going to hit you yet. We'll deal with you all before long. We're not surrendering the country to you. Let's grab this little lost sheep too. Stop, bitch. Stop. Lively little fuck, aren't you? Twist her arm, yeah. You want to resist? Hit her in the face. I'm an election observer. Observe this cow. Shut up, you trap. Into the prison van. I can't move that fast. I'm in heels. Comes the dynamo crew and the guys from Partisan. Hey, guys! Fuck, man, who gets who now? Stupid idiot. An observer in a white dress and heels. Observer, hell. You prostitute. Slut. You'll suck everyone. Get that? And if even one doesn't come, I'll personally stick this truncheon up your ass. Yeah, you like it in the ass? Hey, hands off the girls, you skull fucks. Renat, there's kind of a lot of them, a whole lot. Toss them a grenade. <laughs> Excellent. Now pop a few bullets in their guts. Not the legs, the bellies. Give all the bastards a long, long recovery. Good God. What is happening? It's war. He unleashed civil war. They are shooting, shooting point blank. You can't shoot at your own people. I call on the whole world to intervene and stop this unprecedented violence. We were beating women. I mean, girls. Women. Fuck all knows. That grenade is thick. Nasty smoke. It, it stings. They just grabbed everybody, threw them on the ground and beat them. They mauled them a lot worse than our soccer fanatics ever fucked anyone up. They stomped bare women's legs with jackboots, stomachs with truncheons, face faces with fists. They weren't just beating them. The, the girls were shouting and screaming, don't! And they just kept going. Then our guys joined in the chain and began. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It passed in the past and it'll pass now. They'll rough house a while and then calm down. Teachers understand that. Everything will calm down. Mommy's home, child. Why do you look at me like that? My sweet girl, what's wrong? Oh, she gave me body armour. Why would I need that? Are we playing some game? My nails are broken. White, red and white. My finger too, maybe. I can't move it. It hurts and everything hurts. And that metal in my mouth, the taste of metal, it's strange. I'm sitting in this prison van. There's lots of us here and I'm thinking how not to wrinkle my dress. It's an expensive dress. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Who am I? Did you call me a runt? I can't hear you. We freed six girls. Six. True, we, we lost a couple guys. The bastards pulled them out of our chain and dragged them off. Men, Barter is with you. 
and that fat magazine works. They hit me as hard as they could. They would have shattered my bare arm to pieces, to say nothing of my head. But I gave one a good shot of construction foam in the face, set that fucker flying six feet. Then our guys showed up, 50 of them. Oh, gentlemen. They howled like they were at a Barcelona real match. I went deaf. <laughs> Did they ever unload on them? All we saw was the soles of their boots. I was able to give one a good whack on the ass. I thought he'd go down, but no, he just run faster. Although they didn't run, run very clear. They hid behind an armored personnel carrier. The boss ran tanks out on the streets. You should have seen those things straight out of Mad Max. I didn't have you in my 40s for you to start teaching me. You think someone better will come? They'll close all the factories. You'll have to pay for everything. I have just four years to my pension and I haven't been to the seashore in 15 years. You think we didn't live and don't want anyone else to? So be it. Everybody, all of them into prison vans. If you run out of space, stick them in the gymnasiums. Take over the stadiums. Give them something to remember for the rest of their lives. Authority here doesn't waver. Dad, what is freedom? Bring on the balls. Freedom will come. Hey, you beasts, listen up. My name is Nikita Miskovich. Miskovich, remember that name because it's the name of someone who isn't afraid of you bastards. This is my country. Belarus is my country. This is my city. And this is me, Nikita Miskovich, apprentice metal worker. Fuck, I, I can't see a thing. There's blood everywhere. How many of you are there? Thousands? Where did you come from on my land? Who are you defending? Who? That cockroach! He's a nobody. It's a zero. A, a cockroach. A fat cockroach. Squash him with your heel. He'll crunch and squash. But be done with him. He sets us all against each other. Drowns the nation in blood and, and hate. Pain! We don't want him anymore. You hear me? Beasts, we don't want him anymore! Uh, that's one bought and paid for, that's for sure. By the Yankees or, or the Poles. An organiser on drugs. Fuckhead, that's obvious. Just like the political officer said. Give me another tab. Good stuff, Renner. Nice little high and, and you want to beat, thrash and more? Uh, I'm taking this guy down. They sent some excellent ammo, metallic covered bullets. <laughs> they ripped through the intestines, flip a grenade under his feet. All these bastards are filming us on their telephones. <laughs> Dad said two planes are ready. We bought one from President Niazov of Turkmenistan. He was Dad's friend. His own people poisoned him. It's not too shabby inside. The internet's always good there. And Toilets are genuine cold. That one's at the National Airport. The other, the smaller one, it's at the airbase. Sleepy came in, out, all out of breath, all, all in tears for some reason. Eyes like headlights. She, she hugged me like she was she was my mother, and then and then said I should gather my things and be ready to be at ready at any minute. Do I need my things for? Are we going somewhere? Someone's howling in my ear. You scum. Just couldn't sit home today. I'd put you all on the stake and send you to outer space so you could tell everyone out there your stupid ass lives. And the door of the prison van opens and something plops on the floor. Just drops. Like a chunk of meat. And I feel something warm spurt on my knee my dress the white dress that i bought for masha's wedding now there's 
a swathe of black on it. Then a grenade, it's red, and the piece of meat was a person. It's weird. Something's taped to his arm, but it's a magazine rolling stone. Only it's it's all shredded and it's drenched in blood. Like if a dog ripped it with its fangs. He lifted his eyes to me. One eye. I didn't. And he says, I'm so sorry we didn't free you. I'm so sorry we didn't free you. Who's that barking in there? Shut your trap, fucker. You stepped on his arm and he's hurt. Of course it hurts. Hurts like fuck. Why else would he have shouted like that? Thought he was so smart. Wrapped his arm so we wouldn't find his weak spot. His little fingers sticking out. He's bleeding. That's his eye socket bleeding. Brace yourself, kid. I'll shove my truncheon in it. Or my cock. Whatever you want. He's bleeding out. What's missing in your life? Europe is full of barefoot beggars. Their economy crashed long ago. The only thing keeping Merkel propped up is Putin. We are independent. And the only one defending our independence is our president. Our president even scared off coronavirus. Everybody's sick, but not Belarusians. Three of our high school teachers died in May and June. None from coronavirus, though. They all had ischemic heart disease. Although... They buried them in closed caskets. He's Belarusian. You're Belarusian. Why? <laughs> I said to this idiot, who's Belarusian, Renat? You Belarusian? Me too. I'll show you, bitch. Not to interrupt your elders. Then it got really bizarre. <laughs> I grabbed this chick in white and, and heels by her bangs and I lifted her up to spit in her face and, and choke her some. <laughs> and it was her. Fuck, I, I crap my pants. Her, Masha's sister. Ah, that tiny little thing, smiling all the time, always cheerful. Men, let's play charades. Have you heard the new song by Spleen? Back in Grodno, this new little cafe opened, <laughs> just like in Lvov. She's the bridesmaid at my wedding that didn't happen. It's her. Only her lip is cracked and she's covered in tears and snot. Fuck, what's she doing in this meat grinder? This is scary. I'm scared. And their eyes, frozen from fear. Never, never in my life have I been so scared. His eyeballs are like two pieces of fiery coal filled with hate. There's nothing human in him. He stares. What's he staring at me for? I'm so sorry we didn't free you. Oh, thank God. Stefanski's Bazaar is on the tube. I can catch my breath. All my favourite singers are on. Stas Mikhailov, Galkin, Allegrova, Paul Valley. Everything's coming down then. Thank you, Trump, for coronavirus, for masks. I'm in a mask. She's staring at me, but doesn't recognize me. Although we've been in company 10 times at least. Just a little chick. Nice, slender neck, unlike her sister. Fragile. Hmm. A, a little, little chick. If I squeeze her fingers, they'll, they'll crumble. Should I fuck her today? Tell the truth, she's just what I was looking for before the wedding. Slender, nice, shapely legs. White skin, very tender, I'll admit it. When we went to the aqua park once and she sort of playfully humped my sister, oh, I got a hard on. Masha thought it was for her. Why not? Oh, I've got a hard on now. Uh, uh, so uh, it's all shit's ending. We won. The TV will announce the results. Okay, let's see now. The TV reports everything just as our commission had it, to a T. 81%. We did him proud. We didn't let him down. I'm safe and for my pension now. 
plus a bonus of two months' pay. Otherwise, we might as well just be some lousy Polish present. Oh, the president's going to speak. Sight for sore eyes. Friends, I call on you not so much to defend me. Although that too. First, I know you have much to do at home. You've got the harvest. I know school will start soon. But most important, I remember the 1990s. People everywhere standing in line. Workers with tin dishes and teapots begging for food. Begging to feed their children. I am grateful to all the factory workers, students and office workers who have gone on strike. Strike committees are forming all over the country. Back then, I swore to help you and never let street demonstrations mar the lives of Belarusians. Where do we take them? Where do we take them all? Got it. Listen up, guys. New orders. Not taking anyone anywhere. Just fuck them all up. Anything that moves. The KGB and Financial Crimes Unit will take care of the leaders. We destroyed everything God gave us. Our huge, great empire, without which no problem in the world would have been solved. We received just a bloody chunk of this empire. What did those people want then? What did you want? Internet. I want my internet. Dad, when will the internet come back? I'm hot in this armor jacket. My head itches in this helmet. Oh, oh, telegram's back up. Do you even know what's going on, Dad? It, it looks like a revolution out there. Nexter is saying Minsk is rebelling. I came to the head of the Central Elections Committee to lodge a complaint. They let no one else come in, only me. She has a very large office. A leather sofa stands by a window, and there were two. I had seen their faces many times on television, either the head of the KGB or International Security Forces, or the State Secretary Committee, two of them. Be seated, Mrs Tykonovskaya. They offered me tea. And then the following conversation. So there is an opinion that, that you won the first round of elections. We fear for your life. And you have a four-year-old daughter and a ten-year-old son. My, my, how did we miss them skipping out of Belarus in such a timely fashion? That means you won't be together to record a statement conceding that you lost the election and we won't be able to put your children up in an orphanage. I was silent. They alone spoke. Blood was pulsing through me, right here, in front of my ears. Thump, thump, thump. So you leave us very few choices, said one of them. And the other leaned over to me and said, with a smile, So, Mrs Tykonovskaya, we will give you a piece of paper. There is a statement on it that you will read into your camera. Then you will publish the recording as if it were yours. After you have done that, we will deport you to Lithuania. Should you refuse, we will perform a unilateral orchiectomy on your husband, Mr Sergei Tykonovskaya, whom we currently hold in prison. Do you know what that is? No, let me explain. It is a surgical removal of the right testicle. We will preserve it in a jar of alcohol for you. I thought it was daytime, but it was suddenly dark. I said something into the camera, I don't remember what, that I had lost, that everybody should go home, that I conceded. I spoke in the dark. Light returned only when I heard a quiet voice say, good morning, in Lithuanian. A phone call woke me up, and I was having such a good dream. Right out of the movie, Spring on River Street, I was back in the Soviet Union. Ice cream cost 28 kopecks, and sausage cost a ruble, 30. Bresnev was there. My sister in Borisov called. She said her son is missing, Nikita. He's a metal worker, good kid, an athlete, a little wild maybe. She called and said he left home two days ago and there's been no news since. She called all the hospitals, all the police stations. He was nowhere to be found. She couldn't stop crying. 
Svetlana's son disappeared too, and Vera Nikolaeva's. She's from some school number 39. I said they had no business being out on the street at a time like this. My daughter, Alina, she sits at home and reads books. She keeps out of trouble. Alina? Alina? Where are you, sweetheart? Where are you? Alina? Let's destroy the prison walls. If you want freedom, take it all. The prison walls will crumble, burn and fall and bury the old guard once and for all. We sat the whole night hunched over, kneeling on the floor of the school gym, our faces to the floor. Our hands were tied with construction ties. The guys were hung on tethers and were beaten every hour. I've never heard High squeals, almost passing into ultrasound. The girls were constantly threatened with rape. They wouldn't let you go to the toilets. Many just peed where they were and a pool of blood and urine grew on the floor. It smelled really bad. But there was a child's drawing on the sun of the wall and somebody had written, Vasya loves Olya. And they drew a heart. <laughs> Vasya loves Olya. There is love even in all this horror. It turned out to be tough. Took two rubber bullets in the gut. Intestines inside out. The guy sings like it's a holiday. As if it's his wedding day and not mine. Let's destroy the prison walls. If you want freedom, take it all. The prison walls will crumble, burn and fall, and bury the old guard once and for all. Sleepy Larissa saw me looking at Telegram on my phone and reported it. A snitch. Now everyone's screaming and yelling again. Why are you watching that? It's next to Those pictures are propaganda for the West. Nobody's beating or torturing anyone. Who's going to punish the special forces? Touch just one of them and the whole system will cave in. The system is a monolith. And that old song and dance about people being ungrateful. I took you all in when you had nothing. Wearing peasant boots, blah, blah, blah. I fed you. I led you into this world. And now you have all have iPhones. As though he invented the iPhone. Steve Jobs did that in America. In Belarus, my iPhone's not much more than a brick in your hand. It's the internet's always being knocked offline and you can't watch anything. I thought he'd hit me. I could see it in his eyes that he wanted to punch me in the nose. I, I cried. <clears throat> We've crushed his fingers. Turned his back and ass purple with truncheons, beat his foot soles to a pulp. And I gave him a good jab between the butt cheeks with my club. I promised him I would. That's the way it is with us. Guy says he'll do it, he does it. So nobody else gets any bright ideas. They'll need the experience in prison anyway. We're helping him out, educating the dick brains. They don't learn though. Fuck, Masha's calling again. Ten times today. Yes, Masha, honey, uh, I'm at work. I said I'm at work. I can't talk. Let's destroy the prison walls. If you want freedom, take it all. The prison walls will crumble, burn and fall and bury the old guard once and for all. Thank you. No, I thank you. You're pretty. That's a pretty dress. It was. You're fucking amazing, really. Shut the fuck up. God damn it, billing and cooing. Shit. I'm not talking to you, sweetie. No, honey. Masha, it's just some asshole uh, listening to the TV too loud. It's okay, honey. Don't worry. We'll find her. Maybe your sister's visiting a friend or, or lost her phone. She's a bit dizzy, your sister. There was something wrong about that stormtrooper who held me by the neck. He came up to me a couple of times and just shut down. I thought he'd hit me or something worse. It 
it was like I was sending signals to the universe. Oh, sweet universe, protect me. He'd stand there and look like he wanted to say something and then he'd turn away and go off and start bludgeoning the guys. Won't answer her phone, damn. Takes after her father. He had to do everything his own way. She does too. Where is my damn Valium? You shouldn't do things your own way. One, two, three, four. Do what they say. Clench your teeth, do what they say, and that's it. Well, all right. Let her run free a while. Teachers understand that. He didn't even want me to be born. When he found out Mum was pregnant, he would beat her within an inch of her life. She was all black and, and blue. He demanded she get an abortion. He shouted, you trying to earn the Belarusian throne with your cunt? The state medical hospital where my mother works told me that. But mum kept me. And now I'm with him. His heir. Where's my mother? Mum, oh, get me out of here. But should I bump her or not? Kind of awkward about Masha. What do I tell her? We took your little sister out for a game of hide the sausage. That hard on man. I gotta change the subject. He beat the key to then harder than he beat the rest. The guy from the prison van with the hole in his stomach. He whispered me his name. Nikita. Metal worker. Barter. Very nice guy. He wasn't understanding much anymore. Had no idea what was going on. I, I think he was in shock from the pain. We shouted that he needed an ambulance. The policeman only laughed. And he sang. It's probably all he could do. Sang the same song over and over and over and over. And meanwhile, Outside, new prison vans were coming up all the time. Let's destroy the prison walls. If you want freedom, take it all. The prison walls will crumble, burn and fall. And bury the old guard once and for all. Mom always said family is sacred. Though, let somebody else do her, idiot. <laughs> she, she knew where I work. A sister told her, Roma works for the country. What are you provoking me for, bitch? There's cameras everywhere. Whatever, I'll, I'll let John take a walk somewhere else here tonight. <laughs> Look at all those new chicks they brought in. What are you shouting about? Who's your mother? Ah, the head of an election committee. Excellent. She stewed up a fine stew. Fucking my wedding night. You'll pay me back in full. What's the girl's name? Alina? Renat? Let's, let's take Alina in for interrogation. A good, lively one. I heard you law enforcement officials were rather severe, rather zealous on the streets. But did you start the violence? Did I start it? The authorities? They had to be stopped. These fascist thugs, insurgents, and their puppeteers. Mother says he's sick, in the head. That we should pity him. Why doesn't he pity anyone? He, he knew about those old women dying from coronavirus by the thousands. And he knows everything going on now. Friend Vasya says it's because of my father's fears. He's afraid. Has been for a long time. He's, he's afraid of dying. Lately, he talks about death all the time, about being carried out feet first and right to the grave. I think he thinks he'll be murdered. I never saw them again, neither Nikita or that creepy stormtrooper. What if I never see him again? What if they do what they threaten to do? What if the KGB tortures him? What good is all this if Sir Rosa is gone? 
I think I've figured it out. No, it, it can't be no, possible. I can't wrap my head around that. He's the father of Masha's baby. She loves him so. No, of course not. He simply can't be that. Fascist thugs, insurgents and their puppeteers. The main thing is the puppeteer. They took us to the prison at Ocristino. And when they opened the cell door, I didn't think such a thing was possible. In a cell made for four, there were already 23 girls. And they brought in 13 more of us. 36 people in 65 square feet. There was no air, there was no water, no food either. We all could only stand. They put in two alcoholics with us and they, they stunk to high heaven. <laughs> At one point they opened the door and the guard splashed a bucket of dirty water all over us. Then he shut the door. Two girls had panic attacks and they vomited. I was next to them. And then they stuck in some food through a hole in the door. One loaf of bread for everyone. But you know what the most amazing thing was? Was that there was enough for everyone. Even a little piece was left over. We gave it to one of the alcoholics. We had interrupted her calm life with our revolution. What do you mean you don't know? Then who does? Who's on call here, you or me? Call your superior. What do you mean he's busy? Who I am? Yes, I taught all you dimwits for 37 years. I fixed your elections? I'm the one who faked 80% for the moustache man. I never feared anyone. Whatever you asked me to do, I faked. And now you can't find my daughter. What the hell did I do all that for? So you could be rude to me. I'll complain to the president. Hello? Hello? Oh, my daughter, my sweet daughter. Forgive your mother. Forgive me. Belarusians, you are unbelievable. If you're doing your first president, that will be the beginning of your end. Belarus will run out of champagne when he goes. NATO wants to send soldiers. NATO tanks are going to roll down our streets. You say they're sending in two more battalions from Moscow? <laughs> How about we double up and attack Ukraine too? To the music of Wagner. They want to put bus shoes on us and crack the whip over you. Bring on the balls. Payback will come. Starting Monday. Lock the gates at every striking factory. Don't worry, we'll bring in people from Ukraine and Kyrgyzia. And that damn theatre. Fire them all! Villagers don't have theatres. Cities don't need them. Dad, they've come really close this time. Grab your machine gun and get in the helicopter. We'll come back when they leave. There's a lot of them. A whole lot. They're shouting freedom. Freedom. Freedom, Dad! You still didn't tell me what freedom means. So, how much do they pay you in Russia, Renat? I used to think I'd settle down here. It's calm, stable. None of that Western Guy Roper shit. It has casinos. The broads are obliging. Now, I, I get this feeling they're just not going to stop. I can feel it in my bones. Haven't had a hard on for days. We've We've been fucking with these people for a month, and they just don't stop. At some point, they're going to start pulling off our masks. No need to take your mask off. I know who you are. Dad, I've packed my things. I've got my machine gun. Who do we shoot? Rats. Prostitutes, drug addicts, sheep, cannon fodder. You'll be on your knees yet, begging me 
me to come back. How could they trade me for that? That dumb cluck, that housewife, a woman, that pathetic thing. If that's how it is, I'll die, but I still won't go. And if I do go, I'll take as much and as many with me as I can. If you don't want Lukashenko, you'll get Putin. The wedding is off. What will a person do for love and for hate? It's easy, kid. You aim at a person, a traitor, any traitor. You give him a good look and just squeeze the trigger. Pop! The traitor's gone. It's easy, son. I learned to do it. You can too. Pension. And I don't want your job. Take back your certificate and your stability and your flower gardens. Take it all back. Just give me my daughter, Alina. She has a weak heart. She has asthma. Give her back. And my nephew, Nikita. My sister has hypertension. I won't survive if she... Give them back. Give back our children. Belarusians, I thank you for the choice you have made. You are unbelievable. Well, Renat, I can feel it in my bones. When we go back to Putin, we won't fuck that one up. When absolutely everything hurts, it seems like nothing hurts. The, the feeling wasn't of blood seeping out of a wound. It just seeped out of everywhere. Your, your skin bleeds as if you were sweating. Because battles like this happen once in a hundred years. I mean the battle between good and evil. In the sense that everything is totally clear. I understood immediately that my life was over. And I understood instantly that they would cover up my murder. They'd cremate me in a crematorium, list me as missing, or, or bury me in a forest, or hang me up as if I committed suicide. Fuck them. Fuck them, though. It won't help. Belarusians are a unique people. They'll put up with stuff forever, for decades. Sometimes a whole life. And then, snap. Their patience pops. Belarusians have been insulted. And you can't defeat that kind of insult. Just like you can't defeat Bachter. After all those nights in the prison van, the gym and the prison, my dress looked nothing like what I bought it for with the price of two monthly stipends. It's dirty. It's tattered and it's a white, red, white flag. The blood stain had darkened and it's covered by brown spots of vomit. But still, it's, it's the most fabulous dress in the world. And I wouldn't exchange it for anything. Here we are standing in this cramped cell what marvellous people there are around me. They're all so polite and smart. Microbiologists, teachers, musicians, actors, students. The woman who crawled into the prison van after her son and her husband. People snatched off the streets all these days. Priests, journalists, students, miners and workers, attorneys and doctors. These are the best people on the earth. Belarusians, there is a new and true Belarus here in this cell. And here we all feel the love. And you can't defeat love. Isn't that so universe? Hello, my name is Svetlana. I'm a housewife, the mother of two children. I am the president-elect of Belarus. What are you willing to do for love? 